Welcome to Science with Sathi. This video compilation that you are about to watch talks about a bunch of topics. We'll talk about birth control and we will talk about sexually transmitted diseases and what both of them have to do with each other. Finally, we will talk about the big devil in the room, which is cancer. But not to worry, there are a lot of methods you can follow with which you can diagnose and screen cancer on time and prevent yourself from a lot of bad effects. Is there anything you want to learn about? Please comment below and let us know. Welcome to Science with Sati episode 19. Let us stray a little away from periods and learn about vaginal discharge today. So the cervix and the vagina constantly create a mix of fluids, cells and bacteria to protect and lubricate the vaginal canal and that is what exits out of the vagina and forms the discharge. Now, discharges can vary at the time of your menstrual cycle, hormonal levels and bacterial state of the vagina etc. But for the most part, during our reproductive years, it's normal to have sticky, clear, copious discharge around the time of ovulation because of the rise of estrogen. There is a rise in the production of discharge and a little thicker sticky white discharge before or after ovulation because of the dip in estrogen. Now if the discharge is white or colorless and is not associated with itching or bad odor, it's all good. But if you have heavy foamy discharge and if it's color green or red when not on your period or if it's smelling bad or fishy, it's time to go to the doctor. Welcome to Science with Sati episode 20. Today let us discuss birth control. So birth control can be of two types, natural and artificial. It's important to understand that birth control isn't just to avoid pregnancies, but is also important to prevent STDs, which are sexually transmitted diseases. In this episode, we'll discuss the natural forms of preventing pregnancies. None of these methods will prevent STDs and also these methods aren't foolproof. The only sure way to prevent pregnancies and STDs 100% is abstinence. Everything else will have some chances of failure. So naturally, people either track their menstrual cycle and the nature of their cervical mucus discharge and on the days they are ovulating, they abstain from sex. Another method is called the pull-out method or coitus interruptus where the penis is pulled out right before ejaculation which can have a failure rate of up to 30%. But these methods are still followed by many because of their natural and non-side effect nature. Welcome to Science with Sati episode 21. In the last episode, we learned about the natural forms of contraception. This time, let's learn about the artificial ones. The most popular ones are barrier methods and for good reason. Not only are they easily available, user-friendly and cheap, but they are the only forms of contraception that help prevent STDs. They exist for both penis and vagina owners and are also available in polyurethane if you have a latex allergy. Next, we have spermicides like lotions and cervical sponges which are inserted in the vagina and prevent the sperm from entering the cervix and also have spermicides which kill or halt the sperms. They are preferred by some because of their non-hormonal nature but the reported side effects tend to be irritation in the vagina because of the chemicals in the spermicide. Welcome to Science with Sati episode 22. In this last installment to the birth control saga, let's learn about the pills. We have oral contraceptive pills which are either a singular hormone or a combination of them and they basically alter the menstrual cycle to prevent ovulation and hence prevent pregnancy. They also exist in subdermal implants and injection formats. People stay wary of them because of the side effects like nausea, weight gain, breast tenderness and long term issues like cardiovascular problems but they are very efficient at preventing pregnancy with a 93 to 99% success rate depending on how well you stick to the regime. Among other such long-term contraception options, we have IUDs which are intrauterine devices like copper T that are inserted into the reproductive tract and they release a hormone and copper to kill sperms and prevent pregnancy. Lastly, we have permanent and semi-permanent methods like tubectomy for women or vasectomy for men. In tubectomy, the eggs are prevented from reaching the uterus and in vasectomy, the sperms are halted from reaching the uterus for fertilization.
Welcome to Science with Sati episode 23. In the last episodes, we discussed the need for barrier contraceptives for the prevention of STDs. So in this episode, let us discuss RTIs and STDs. RTI stands for reproductive tract infection and STDs stand for sexually transmitted diseases. Now they sound similar, but all RTIs are STDs. There are certain STDs like HIV or hepatitis B that don't affect the reproductive tract, but they are transmitted sexually. Either way, there are a myriad of diseases like syphilis, gonorrhea, herpes, and many others that fall under either category. The biggest uniqueness about these diseases is it takes time for the symptoms to show up, but they can still be transmitted during the non-symptomatic period. So it's important to practice safe sex and get tested occasionally for STDs. Welcome to Science with Sati episode 24. In the upcoming episode, let's discuss different types of cancers that occur in the female reproductive system, their risk factors and how they get diagnosed. First, let us talk about breast cancer. It's the most common cancer among women and 1% of all breast cancer cases are men. Now, breast cancers can present as lumps, but not all lumps are cancer, and so doctor visit is imperative to distinguish between them. Breast cancer can also present as rashes, dimpling on the breast, inverted nipples, milk ejection, etc. People with obesity, older age, Age, consuming alcohol, taking hormone replacement therapy, or having children late or not at all. All of these increase the risk of getting this. Now, if you have a lump that is suspected to be cancer, they do a biopsy in which they take a bit of the growth and test it to see its nature. It's very important to remember that you have to do a self-breast exam every three months, a week after your period. From the ages of 45 to 70, it's good to get a mammogram every two years. Exercise, maintaining weight, consuming less alcohol, frequent self-breast exams, they can all help to prevent the occurrence or reduce the severity of cancers. Welcome to Science with Sati episode 25. Today, let us discuss uterine cancers. While not as common, they still occur in many people. The uterus has two layers, the endometrium, which is the inner layer that grows and sheds with every period, and the myometrium, which is the muscular layer of the uterus. Cancers can occur in both, but endometrial cancers are easier to treat. While the symptoms aren't as specific, discharge, bleeding between periods or after menopause, pain, and pressure in the pelvic area, all these symptoms warrant a visit to the doctor. Obesity, type 2 diabetes, taking contraceptive pills with only estrogen in them, late menopause, all these can increase the risk of getting uterine cancers. Once suspected, a doctor will do a pelvic exam, sometimes even a pap smear or an ultrasound to confirm the diagnosis. There's no preventative screening method, but if you have any of the risk factors, it's good to keep them under check. Welcome to Science with Sati episode 26. Today, let us discuss cervical cancer. The fourth most common cancer in women, 90% of the cases are caused due to a virus called HPV, which is a human papilloma virus. There are other risk factors like smoking, weaker immune system and contraceptive pills, which may increase your risk of getting cervical cancer along with the HPV. The best way to screen for cervical cancer is by doing a pap smear. Getting an annual pap smear is the best way to go about it. Cervical cancer's early stages don't have any symptoms and when there's bleeding and pain, it's already too late. Hence, prevention is the best way. It's also advised to get HPV vaccination to prevent infections and use condoms when having sex.